stillbirths, targets, where, why and what to do. In 2014, the Every Newborn Action Plan set a target to end preventable stillbirths by 2030. The target was a national stillbirth rate of 12 or less stillbirths per thousand total births in every country by 2030. As we can see in this graph here, the green line at the top shows the global stillbirth rate, which in 2015 was 18.4 and the projection of where it will be by 2030 if no action is taken. The annual rate of reduction between 2000 and 2015 was 1.9%. To reach the target by 2030, we need an annual rate of reduction of 4.2%. So this is a large increase. However, 94 countries have already met the stillbirth rate of 12 or fewer per thousand births they must close their equity gaps so that each woman and her child in their country has the same chance of survival. Around 60 countries need to more than double their current progress. Many high burden countries have set out newborn action plans to increase the investment and action to end these preventable deaths. More than 80% of high burden countries have set neonatal mortality targets to reach by 2030, but only 30% have set a stillbirth rate target. This needs to change if we're going to close this gap and end preventable stillbirths by 2030. So stillbirths, where are they happening? When are they happening? And why are they happening? In 2015, there were an estimated 2.6 million stillbirths. As we can see on the map here, 10 countries account for two thirds of stillbirths globally. This map shows stillbirth rates. The darker the shading, the higher the stillbirth rates. And here we can see big differences between countries with rates of lower than five in most high income settings and rates as high as 30 or 40 in parts of sub-Saharan Africa, particularly those affected by conflict. So when are the 2.0 million stillbirths occurring? Well, overall, there are 5.1 million stillbirths and neonatal deaths. Around half of all stillbirths 1.3 million deaths are occurring before the onset of labour. A further half of 1.3 million stillbirths occurred during labour, with just under a million neonatal deaths on the day of birth, and a further 1.6 million neonatal deaths in the rest of the first month of life. So why are 2.0 million stillbirths dying each year? Well, important causes globally include infections such as syphilis, group B strep and malaria, intrapartum obstetric or childbirth complications, antepartum haemorrhage, maternal conditions which affect the placenta and fetal growth such as hypertension, diabetes and congenital and genetic conditions. There are however challenges with comparing cause of death across different settings there are more than 50 different classification systems for stillbirth currently in use. And where we have differences in rigorous investigation between sites, the results may not be comparable even if we use the same classification system. Because of these reasons, no global estimates are currently possible. However, from the evidence that we have, we know that most stillbirths are preventable. This figure here shows the population attributable risk for stillbirth of seven major modifiable risk factors globally. So you can see deaths from maternal infections and non clinical diseases are largely preventable with very few deaths due to congenital causes. So if the majority of these deaths are preventable, what must we do to end preventable stillbirths by 2030? First of all, we must invest in every mother and every baby, including stillbirths. This is investing in the girl child, the adolescent woman, 
preconception care and in high quality antenatal and intrapartum care. These investments will give a quadruple return on investment, leading to fewer stillbirths but also fewer maternal and newborn deaths, improved child development, but also improve women's health in general, generating substantial economic and social benefits. In this analysis below, we show the cost of averting a stillbirth in low middle income countries returned almost 25 times by the economic and social value these live children would bring their families, communities and nations. An important part of this investment must be improving the quality of care for every mother and every newborn along the continuum of care. This includes preconception, with equitable access to family planning, and folic acid supplementation or fortification, quality antenatal care, including detection and management of maternal complications in pregnancy, such as infections, especially syphilis and malaria, hypertensive disorders of pregnancy and diabetes. In addition, detection and management of fetal growth restriction. High quality care is also needed around the time of birth to prevent the 1.3 million interpartum stillbirths. Fetal monitoring during labour with timely response and action is required to prevent many of these deaths. In addition, in places where pregnancy length can be accurately assessed, induction of labour for pregnancies lasting more than 41 weeks can prevent stillbirths. But finally, we need to count every baby, including stillbirths. This map here shows the data availability at a national level for stillbirths globally. The red indicates that stillbirths are routinely captured in national routine data systems. The grey, dark grey indicates that there is no national data available, and the light grey indicates it's from survey only. As we can see here, there are large gaps for stillbirth in sub-Saharan Africa and Asia. Globally, only 39 countries have high quality data on all stillbirths at a national level. And even amongst high burden countries, only 53% have a perinatal death review system, which includes capture of all stillbirths. We need to count every baby to make every baby count and end preventable stillbirths.